Howdy friends, it's Thursday. I said yesterday that these intros are supposed to remind you what day of the week it was, and I promptly forgot afterwards thinking yesterday was Thursday, which it may well have been. Who knows in this crazy life that we're living in? So let's talk about something crazy, an existential question of the day, which my existential question is, are existential questions worth it? Do you guys like them? Do you want them to continue? I don't know. I, is, it, is it worth it? Is, is any of this worth it? Or am I just screaming out into the void nonsense? Let me know down below in the comments. And while you're down there, don't forget to check out our Twitch channel. We just did the Twitch live stream of NVIDIA's announcement, which actually turned out to be a nine part YouTube channel review. And like, they didn't even put it together as one big thing and they didn't do a YouTube premiere like Sony did with their keynote, even though it was pre-recorded. They just launched nine videos all at the same time, which means in order, the first one that got released was part five for whatever reason. Anyways, we watched it over on our Twitch channel and we got some big NVIDIA news. NVIDIA has confirmed Ampere. It is real and holy heck is it powerful. They unveiled the Ampere A100, which is the world's largest seven nanometer chip. It's also a huge monster chip coming in at 825 square millimeters, bigger, bigger than the Tesla V100, and it has 54 billion transistors packed into it. This thing is massive. Obviously, this is anticipated to be the case that this was going to be a ginormous GPU simply because this is NVIDIA's flagship. This is supposed to be put in servers. And when you put eight of them together, this thing goes wicked fast. They talked about how the DGX A100 with eight of them can hit five petaflops of performance for $200,000. It's cheap for what it gives you. The A100 by itself for FP16 compute, it can do 312 or 624 teraflops of performance. That or is based on sparsity, which is a way that they figured out how to do compression with certain things that they do. For FP32, it can do 156 teraflops. And for FP64, it can do 19.5 teraflops. It has 1.6 terabytes per second of memory bandwidth on a 6,144-bit bus with HBM2E and draws only 400 watts. This thing is mondo big, mondo massive. It is scarily large. And it seems like this is just the way of the future for NVIDIA. Ampere making huge generational improvements over Volta. Jensen saying that it's about 20 times as powerful, not just due to the raw power, but also ways that they figured out to make FP32 more accelerated. They found little tricks and hacks in the math to make it just run faster. So without, without mind you, the need to tune it. You don't have to program for it. It'll just do it for you, which is insane. If we see anything like this come to gamers, which bad news for you, although it's not really news, they didn't announce anything with the gaming side of things, except for the fact that Ampere will be part of their gaming lineup. That's, that's the big revelation that Jensen gave us, that Ampere will be both high performance compute as well as gaming. So gamers are going to get Ampere, and I just, I'm excited to see what it's gonna be after Nvidia dropped this. But it's not the only thing that Nvidia talked about during their several sets of videos for their GTC keynote. Most of it was focused on AI. They had a conversational AI, which was scary as all heck because, oh my gosh, that's just gonna give telemarketers a huge advantage on trying to converse with people and scam them out of their money. They also talked about their drive AI. They talked about new SDKs. They talked about Merlin. They talked about Isaac. They had several different new things that they were talking about with regards to how to develop for AI. And that's the big thing behind the AI. A100, it is an AI chip. It's basically meant to make AI easy and you can replace an $11 million server that was previously with NVIDIA with a million dollars of these things. So it is 10% of the cost for the same performance, which is phenomenal by them. Fun fact, the DGX A100, which has those eight Ampere A100s, it uses an AMD ROM processor. So fastest GPU in the world, running AMD. You're welcome. The scariest bit about NVIDIA's keynote was the opening because it was all AI generated, the voice was AI generated, the music was AI generated, it was scary. Scary, scary Westworld vibes. I am even the narrator of the story you are watching. Of the story you are watching. And the composer of the music. faces its greatest challenge. I give us the power to take it on together.
Chris was terrified. He's shaking in his boots right now. I'm so scared. Ah, he's so scared. So let us know what you think of Ampere down below in the comments. We still have to wait for Nvidia to give us the gaming news, but it's very clear that they have not been resting on their laurels. They are charging ahead and basically wanting to decimate the entire data center market with the things that they can come up with. It was crazy. Ah, but while we're looking at the future with Ampere, let's go back to Turing for a second because there is a motherboard that comes with an integrated graphics card. Linus actually checked out one of these in a recent video. However, it's going to be updated to a GTX 1650. So there you go. But let's talk about the future again. Okay, we talked about the past. Let's just go back to the future. And let's talk about the Unreal Engine 5 demo that came out yesterday, which made me more hyped for the future of consoles than anything Microsoft has showed off so far. Like we can talk about the fact that the Xbox Series X had a better console reveal. 12 teraflops in a GPU gets my, my, my excitement all bubbling up. But Unreal Engine 5, games looking better is absolutely wanted to, what I wanted to see. All of the games that they're showing for the Xbox Series X looks like Xbox One X games, just a little prettier, that's it. Unreal Engine 5 looks like it's actually going to be that next generation leap in visuals that we all want, and it was all running in real time on a PlayStation 5. Absolutely beautiful, real time ray tracing, lossless details coming in, so many triangles. This bad boy can fit so many triangles in it. However, while it was a technical demo yesterday, I, I wondered to myself during me watching it, uh, how many games are actually gonna be able to maintain this level of visual fidelity, and one of the art directors for God of War came out and tweeted saying, uh, kudos to the art team that can create with this fidelity for 30 plus hours of gameplay. So while games might not look that good right now, Unreal Engine 5 should make it easier for a lot of people to make games that look much better, which Fortnite, Fortnite getting Unreal Engine 5 confirmed. Ooh. I'll talk about that in a second, but this is also coming out with Tim Sweeney, the CEO of Epic Games, saying that the PlayStation 5 is a remarkably balanced device and saying that the SSD that is on that console is way beyond anything that's on PC right now, which is true, at least from the technical specs. Most people cannot hit seven gigabytes per second on a single drive, and they don't have the IO throughput optimized to do what the PlayStation 5 SSD can do. So the PS5 does seem like to be a tremendous console, even if its GPU is a little underpowered overall it's a massively massively powerful console but also epic games announcing that with unreal engine you, you now don't owe the company any money for royalties until your game makes a million dollars in sales the previous amount where they took a five percent fee was at fifty thousand dollars is when they started collecting it now if you don't earn a million dollars with a game that you made with unreal engine you don't pay them and if you do make a million dollars they didn't raise that fee it's five percent Epic Games doing like legit good stuff for the industry. They also are giving GTA 5 away for free right now. That got leaked yesterday. It came out, it crashed their servers. They had to remove it from the Epic Games store. I'm not sure if it's back at this moment, but last I checked, GTA 5 had to be removed because it was so wildly powerful. Reese is showing me right now, Epic Games is down. The demand for GTA 5 being free has crashed Epic Games. That's crazy. Getting back to Fortnite for a second, it's been confirmed that Fortnite will be a PS5 and Xbox Series launch title and will migrate over to Unreal Engine 5 later next year, but it makes sense that it would be on the consoles at launch. So there's that. Speaking more of the, about the PS5, there's some indication that Sony will be having a state of play event on June 4th for the PlayStation 5 and that it might feature an entire slate of games, which I just, Jack 4 and Horizon Zero Dawn 2. Why did Mark Cerny show off Jack and Daxter in the PS5 technical specs? Why did he talk about Jack and Daxter if we're not getting either an Unreal Engine 5 Jack and Daxter remake of the trilogy or Jack 4? It has to happen, okay? Naughty Dog, do you hear me? I'll forgive you for whatever's happening with Last of Us. I don't care. Give me Jack 4. I have demands and servers. They're demanding. You need a lot of stuff going on there. Backblaze, which is a server company that provides you with cloud backup for all the stuff that you got going on. They released their Q1 stats on their hard drive reliability. And it turns out that Seagate has the worst 
failure rate amongst all of the hard drives that they use by a few factors. So they found out that the annualized failure rate of a lot of their drives for Seagate are in the 1.2 to 1.4%, whereas for HDST, they're more in the half of a percent. They're using a total of 129,000 drives. They had a total of 335 of them fail. Obviously, a 1.5% failure rate isn't horrendous, but when it comes to your data potentially being gone forever. Are those odds you want to take? Did you sneeze? Are you sneezing? Bless you. And let's bless Google for a second because they are coming out with something that I desperately need, which is group tabbing for Chrome. You can take all of the tabs that you have and merge them into a group and then have separate group tabs. It's phenomenal because people always complain when we do our hot news live live streams that I have way too many tabs open because that's just how I do hot news. I have each tab and I just go from tab to tab, make that happen. If I could slim that down and make it not look as so terrible, well, I'll do it. It's available currently on Chrome beta. So you can check that out if you so desire. I'm going to wait till it comes out to the regular Chrome because I can't have nothing crashing on me and we can't have high altitude balloons crashing. That's a fact. Loon trying to make sure that doesn't happen. And it's been announced that Loon is going to be partnering with Vodacom in Mozambique to provide internet to some of the rural regions there, especially where there is no 4G coverage for Vodacom. And they came out and said that the people who use their network should have no indication that they're using high altitude balloons besides the fact that they'll now have coverage in places they never had coverage before. But coverage is not going to help you, Intel with your 10 series launch because nobody's buying these, okay? The pre-order pricing has come out and it's a little confusing because the pricing that Intel gave was for their trays of a thousand, how many you should put, the, how much that would cost. So it was like $500 for a tray of thousand of the 10 900K. Well, release pricing has come out, pre-order pricing. B&H Photo has it for $600 but Newegg has it for $530, but they're both out of stock and you can't really pre-order them right now. Those are just the prices that we see. Is Newegg gonna raise their price? Is B&H gonna drop it? B&H typically, usually at MSRP, they don't usually do have a markup over other retailers for the same products. So I'm confused. What's the actual price? We'll have to wait until May 20th to see, but how many of you care? Probably not a whole lot because nobody's gonna be buying them. But if you do and you overclock them, well, Intel's gonna be offering their performance tuning protection plan, which means that you get one free replacement for bricking a CPU due to overclocking. So, get cool. Thank you, Intel. They know who their market is. They know who their market is. And you know who's the market for the Google Pixel 4? Not a whole heck of a lot of people, which is apparently why two of the leads on the Google Pixel 4 have left the team, according to reports, this is after the internal teams behind the Pixel 4, especially the lead, were disappointed with not only the Pixel 4's reception, but its actual development, stating that the lead of the Pixel team right before it launched said that he was very disappointed in everything that was happening. And this is because he took a hands-off approach to management and allowed things to happen without him trying to actually control things, which is a very anti-Steve Jobs thing to do. Maybe Google's trying to be the anti-Steve Jobs, whatever. Uh, apparently, he was was just not happy with the Pixel 4, especially its battery life. And what didn't you know it? Consumers weren't either. And there we go. People don't like the Pixel 4, but you should like NZXT and you should like this t-shirt because they have announced their charity shirt. It's going to be 100% of the proceeds are going to Direct Relief, which is a organization that's helping to fight against Voldemort. You can pick it up over on Design by Humans if you so desire. It's just a good charity thing that they're doing, a charity thing that they're doing. $25 a shirt, which isn't terrible. I think I, I really like them. I might pick one up in Heather Gray. I'll see about that. But yeah, in case you want to do that, 100% of the proceeds go to Direct Relief. And that's going to be the end of Hot News today. What do you think about the NVIDIA news? What do you think about everything we talked about today? Let me know down below in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the the video here. Don't forget about the existential question, which is our existential questions even worth it? Let me know down below in the comments. And while you're down there, just click off the video because I'm done. Bye.